Dr. Raj Gopal Chidambaram, born in Chennai in 1936, spent his early life in Meerut. The memories still linger. When I was two years old and we were shifting house, uh, I was lost. I walked away from the house, must have walked away maybe half a kilometer. And I'm told I was uh, restored to my house uh, by an old uh, Muslim gentleman. Some memories at Presidency College left a deep impression. And I took up this B.Sc. Honours Physics uh, course in Presidency College, Madras. And uh, as you know, this was the college uh, which had produced uh, uh, C.V. Raman, perhaps the greatest uh, experimental physicist uh, this country has uh, produced. And also uh, Subramaniam Chandrasekhar, the great uh, astrophysicist, both Raman and Chandrasekhar, of course, uh, uh, Nobel laureates. I joined the Indian Institute of Science in 1956 and the physics department uh, under the leadership of Professor R.S. Krishnan, in fact he was very helpful to me in uh, choosing uh, the uh, area of research I would work on. He put me with Dr. Suryan who was designing an analog computer, uh, analog computer for uh, storing uh, Fourier series and summing it up. And that I uh, worked for a an year, and then I, for which I got my MSc degree. Dr. Chidambaram then joined the Baba Atomic Research Center, where he initiated research in crystallography. As nuclear research progressed steadily at BARC, India conducted its first peaceful nuclear explosion in 1974. 24 years later, India repeated the test. Dr. Chidambaram played a pivotal role in both. See, the first uh, uh, set of three tests were carried out on May 11th. And two days later, uh, we carried out uh, two more tests of Chotus, as I call them, uh, devices which are uh, sub-kiloton. So this combination of uh, these uh, five tests have given us an enormous amount of uh, data. And also I must add here that uh, uh, these devices are 98 vintage as I have said uh, before. Suppose you are testing in the 50s. You uh, designed your device on the basis of the knowledge of physics, engineering and electronics that you had in the 50s. And this, these advanced in the 60s let us say. Then you have to repeat the test and so on through the 70s and the 80s. So when today I carry out a test in 1998, 1998 and I put in the best physics I know, the uh, latest uh, level of engineering and metallurgy and electronics. So each one of these tests must be considered uh, equivalent to uh, a, s a number of tests if we had carried them uh, over uh, decades, carried them out over decades. After becoming the director of BARC, during 1994-95, he was elected chairman of the Board of Governors of the International Atomic Energy Agency. See, the International uh, Atomic Energy Agency uh, is the primary body for promoting the peaceful applications of uh, nuclear energy. As you know, India was a founder member of the International Atomic Energy Agency. And uh, we have always been a designated member of the Board of Governors being considered one of the dozen or so most advanced countries in the field of uh, uh, nuclear um, energy. And they respect our status. For instance, when I uh, presented some uh, uh, environmental stat monitoring equipment to Dr. Hans Blix, the Director General of IAEA, when I was the Chairman of the Board of Governors, uh, while accepting the gift, uh, see this equipment will be used uh, for um, uh, training people from developing countries. So when Dr. Hans Blix, when he accepted this equipment, he said if you talk of uh, self-reliance in the nuclear uh, field, there is no better example than India. At the helm of some of the apex national and international bodies, Dr. Chidambaram has helped emboss India's name on the nuclear technology map of the world. How does he see the future of nuclear energy in India? 
See, the most uh, important application of nuclear energy is power, nuclear power, producing electricity using nuclear energy. And as I look into the future, look at the sources of energy that we have, and I look at the requirement of increasing the per capita electricity consumption in this country very substantially. I see nuclear energy as an inevitable option to satisfy the future energy needs of this country. Dr. R. Chidambaram, world acclaimed scientist, has been decorated with several prestigious awards. To name a few, the C. V. Raman Birth Centenary Award, the R. D. Birla Award of the Indian Physics Association, and the Lifetime Achievement Award for Science and Technology instituted by the Indian Analytical Instruments Association. A glimpse of the busy scientist in a few relaxed moments with his family reveals a man of varied interests. In the words of his wife, Chela. He is a family person and he likes to spend enough time with the children and relatives. And once I used to have sari seal, he's fond of this cream color. Bring saris only in cream color, whatever texture, from silk to cotton, I used to have saris. <laughs> he likes Punjabi food also, but a good South Indian food he enjoys. Nice husband. When he's not playing scientist, what does he like? I like cricket. And as I've grown older, I have tended to read more and more books on uh, philosophy. See, I enjoy Carnatic uh, classical music. The illustrious career and contented personal life of this eminent man thrive on a certain philosophy of life. See, like uh, everyone else in the world, I think I'm a composite person. I'm a scientist trying to understand natural phenomena. I'm also a technologist trying to do things which would be of uh, benefit to my countrymen, deeply moored in the cultural and philosophical heritage of India, try to follow the teachings in the Bhagavad Gita. But I think uh, my ultimate belief is in Advaita Vedanta, which is, I think, uh, the only religious philosophy with which a scientist can be comfortable. <laughs>